Hi guys, we're rolling and uh, we are in Miami as I'm sure you know by now. We're in Brickell in the wind building again and um, today I have a really special guest. He's a professional basketball player but he's a kind of a philosopher among basketball players as I was able to see on his Instagram uh, page. Um, my guest today here in the jacuzzi in Brickell, Miami is Ivan Aska. Play by Ivan Aska. Beautiful defense and then Aska on the offensive end extending all the way to the rim to get that finish. Ivan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, it's a nice day here in Miami. Um, not too far from where I live. But uh, other than that, it's, uh, it feels nice out here and I'm feel good to be on your podcast and I'm looking forward to the interview. I'm glad you feel this way because it's a beautiful sunny day today and uh, I want to discuss some uh, sports related topics with you but also like non-sports related stuff because you know uh, it bothers me that people often do look at professional sports sportsmen as mm -hmm. only people who can talk about sport you know and yeah. I'm trying to break that, that stigma uh, but I'm I'm going to start with some sports related questions because okay. it's, I think it's really important for getting to know you so when did you realize that you have a potential that you have a talent for basketball um I could say my eighth grade year um, my eighth grade year um, playing in middle school I had an opportunity to start playing. Um, one of my coaches, Coach Benny, um, gave me an opportunity to build my confidence, but also to even pursue something that I didn't know I would be doing till this day. <laughs> so uh, there was like someone who told you, so I think that you have a potential, you should pursue mm -hmm. this career, right? And when do you realize that it's going to be a career for you? Um. When I had reached my senior year in high school, I graduated. Um, I went off to college at Murray State University. I was recruited from um, Isaac Chu, uh, Billy Kennedy, um, some good people that um, really helped me get to this point in uh, my career. And that's when I knew just taking things one day at a time and just believing in myself. So what was the what was the hardest thing, let's say, growing up? What was the hardest thing that you should that you had to let go of in uh, order to become a very successful professional basketball player? Like, what were there like um, some kind of uh, you know um, challenges for you in terms of growing up, in terms of going out, girls, and stuff like that? Um, <clears throat> I could say. Uh, bad habits far as I had to change uh, my view towards um, like life uh, I had to hold myself accountable for my actions uh, learn from my mistakes but also not lose um, the faith I had and in, also in me to get to where I want to in life was it hard for you to reach those heights uh, in a professional basketball career? I'm, I'm asking this because the competitiveness is probably huge in that field. So there are many other players who, who are as good as you probably. So what is the thing that like makes the, the, the extent, distinction between uh, the successful basketball player and not, not successful one? Um, I really, for me, I really uh, will say faith because you have to believe in yourself and there's going to be people out there that's better than you. Um, you know, they're going to work harder to a certain point, different skills. But I really say just yourself having faith in yourself and really just continuously having a consistent flow with yourself. And with that comes with, like I said, just the confidence, the faith and just believing in yourself. Yeah, it's easy to say that now, but I mean, growing up, mm -hmm. it must have been not so easy for you to find them the place of like peace and confidence for yourself. So how, how did you manage to find that particular place inside yourself? Um, spiritually, um, just having a relationship with God. And I say that because the things my grandmother um, gave me um, scriptures, things to read, things to also read in a book. Some books that I've read 
um, really helped me get to this point. And nobody's perfect, but I think just really taking things day by day and knowing that you're trying and you're trying to strive to be better and better yourself, it comes with a lot of a lot of discipline. Okay. And I think people don't understand just also the things that you eat, the things that you like listen to, the things that you put your focus on. And it's, it's hard, you know, you got distractions, temptations, it's life, especially when you're in a field of success and you know you're handsome and you know, just beautiful also for men or women. And just, it's, it's, it's tough, but at the end of the day, you have to be honest with yourself and hold yourself accountable and just do the best you can. Your Instagram username is Humble Heart 42, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, is, is, is a humble heart something that you should have if you want to be very successful in life? Um, yeah, and before Humble Heart, it was uh, Daddy Long Legs. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, as I, like I said, matured and I just something that fits me and I am humble is nothing that I really taught myself. I think that's just how I was as a kid. Um, I could say I am shy, you know, just like telling you, I was kind of shy doing this interview, but I was like, it's something new. I might as well try it out and just have people hear another voice around in this society. Yeah, sure. I, I really love that you uh, said yes to my interview request. Um, so, like, growing up and becoming this, this really successful basketball player, you, 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 you used to play for a college, right? Yeah. And after that, you know, the road leads to the NBA draft. But you were not drafted. Why was that? Um, I could say, all right, at that time, I was uh, undersized. I was playing power forward, 6'7". Um, we had a lot of good talent. Um, Isaiah Cannon, right now he's playing in Olympiacos. Uh, I had also good teammates as Ed Daniel, um, Juwan Long, Dante Poole. Right now he's on the coaching staff now at Murray State. And also some good other teammates um, that's still playing overseas now. But as far as in my position, um, just being, I could say my confidence wasn't low, but I was just realistic with myself, reality wise. I needed more skill sets in certain areas. Um, I did try, I did do the, do the NBA Summer League with the Miami Heat and uh, Minnesota Timberwolves. And I just felt a home playing overseas. And I wouldn't say I wouldn't try, but honestly, anything could happen. But right now, um, life is good and I'm just taking things day by day, but also I'm just improving my skills too to see how far I could go in my career. Yeah, so what would you, uh, what would you say is the main difference like uh, in playing abroad in, the, in Europe or Asia mm -hmm. versus playing here in the States for the NBA? Uh, I haven't played a game, you know, a full season in the NBA, but just far as just seeing the talent and also during the summer, playing against us, some of these NBA dudes is uh, it's high level intensity. Intensity. Yes, also basketball IQ. And also too, just where you fit in, in a, into a program. And um, I could say a lot of people just looking at me playing to see other guys saying like, man, you have a chance to be in the NBA. You have the opportunity to, why wouldn't you? And I think just being away and ex I just wanted to expand life see different countries i just didn't want to be my comfort zone so just adjusting to different cultures um just people views how people live and things and i think that helped me now to this day and would you say like uh the thing that i can like see from the distance of like being a uh, podcast host and just like watching nba games from time to time uh the thing that i see that is different is uh, the way the business is uh, done around the, the sport mm -hmm. okay, so here it's high intensity when it comes to building businesses around NBA or any professional league but back in like, Europe or any other continent I don't think there's so many businesses involved 
um, and uh, like <clears throat> that um, um, thing like being a professional NBA player mm -hmm. is a you're, you're automatically a superstar here so it's not the same thing in, in Europe was it was that something that was more comfortable for you like coming from that place in your heart when you want to stay humble um and also too like overseas uh, some teams certain countries you know you're like a superstar to them um and I think from you know business wise I think there should be more businesses and some of these professional sports and also too it's different you have to win you have to find the funds and maybe in certain countries it might be soccer bigger than basketball or you know it's, it's like that and I just think um, by me being in that situation um, I learned I learned how they operate and at the end of the day I just have to be professional and show professionalism no matter what the situation is if payments is late or something don't go your way or you know they don't do something that you're accustomed to on other teams so you just have to start all over and really learn from the beginning of the coaches the management and really just control your emotions and it's tough you have your bad days but I think just being respectful and having that professionalism will really take you a long way yeah yeah and um I was uh, just wondering, like, since you've played on a lot of continents uh, and in a lot of countries, mm -hmm. which one was the more, ex the most exciting country for you, and maybe the, the place that you want to live later when you retire? Ooh. Is it the States or somewhere else? Of course, because my son is here, my family. Of course, Florida, uh, Broward County. Shout out to Broward County. Shout out. Um, but also, I'll say the Philippines. The Philippines, uh, I had an opportunity to go play there, the fan base, the culture, um, the weather, the island, the food, the people, okay. um, and a team that was playing on, uh, San Miguel Berman, shout out to them as well. Um, and I'm looking forward to going back to play. Whatever happens is, is for me, but I will always go back. Um, with welcoming them arms and to the people that show love to me there and I could see myself living there I could see myself living there okay I, I can see you living there as well yeah, yeah. Um, you're also play, you're playing for the national team of Virgin Islands mm -hmm. right and um, is there a difference like when you play for a club for example that, uh, in the comparison to when you play for uh, your country let's say. Uh, it's a different type of I could say it's the same emotions, but more of a, a pride thing to really take your country to um, another level. But the Virgin Islands, um, Tim Duncan, of course, is from there. Um, really, really good uh, players uh, coming out of there. Um, shout out to my national team, the Virgin Islands as well. Shout out to the national team of Virgin um, Islands. Um, <laughs> And I could say that they also gave me an opportunity to showcase my talent because if it wasn't for them playing in the summer, those extra games and I could have a bad season or my numbers wasn't good and the national team really helped me um, get over that and also helped me through my career. So I really appreciate that a lot. And even this summer, I plan on playing with them um, whenever we have games available. That's great, that's amazing. So I have to ask you one question, and uh, it's, uh, it's a question that is like posing itself. Uh, since you're a professional basketball play player, that means that you're like basically making money off of playing basketball, and mm -hmm. that's what you do the best. So uh, do you only play basketball for the sake of making money, or do you still enjoy it? Uh, I love it. Um, of course, financially, it helps me um, take care of myself, my son, especially, you know, my mother my sister um, and you know my loved ones and I think me having a passion for it takes it a long way and uh, like I said I'm very thankful for the money but really I really have a passion for it because you meet new people um, you do interviews in a pool that you never thought you'll be doing for example um, my agent as well um, I had other 
agents, it didn't work out well as a business, but I could say um, the agent I have now, Ivan, same first name <laughs> as me. To Ivan. Yeah, um, but he really does a great job um, with helping me in my career, and I've seen a different change. And uh, like I said, I, I really have a passion for it. Like, just uh, after my career, I would love to mentor kids or you know athletes that's getting into this field and just tell them what's the ins and outs of it and just tell them it's going to be okay but you just got to have a really tough mindset to really deal with things overseas because things might not go your way so i have to ask you we just said that your name is ivan your agent's name is ivan your father's name is ivan your grandfather's name was ivan your son's name is ivan yeah so how did you guys all end up with that name because uh, i don't know if you know but the name is very popular mm -hmm. in europe i guess i guess you know that yeah uh to be honest um i don't know what my dad was thinking <laughs> or whatever he gave me the name, but just to see how, okay, he wanted my name after him. And when it was decided to what I was gonna name my son, I didn't I didn't even know what to think about. And it was like till the last couple of days till he was born. And um, I was like, okay, he can have my first and last name. And we came up with a middle name for him, which is uh, Ramiro. And um, yeah, so I, I just, came up with that and I I think it fits him um, just how he reacts to some of the things that I know that I do and what my mom dad told me things that they see my son doing that I did okay. growing up so, so it fits him yeah it fits him okay and uh, what's your last name I don't know if you if you knew this but there's like this uh, Nobel Prize winner from, okay. from uh, ex Yugoslavia and he had a short story named Aska and the Wolf. Mm -hmm. So Aska was a sheep, I don't know if you know this, and the sheep was, uh, she managed to run away from the wolf by uh, mesmerizing the wolf with its dance. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a really nice story coming mm -hmm. from okay. the, the only Nobel Prize winner and he named uh, from our country and he named his main character Aska. I don't know oh, if you knew okay. this. No, I didn't. And um, like I said, that's that's something new. That's something like interesting. Like wow, yeah. like how you learn my, something every day. Every day. Um, but yeah, when people hear my first and last name, they're like, they don't think of a guy being from yeah. Florida, Virgin Islands. You know, imagine some kind of Russian. Or yeah, Russian. Polish guy. Right? Yeah, but um, no, it's it's kind of cool. You know, you shock people, and you know they really interested and curious to know about you. Cause your name like where do you get this from or how like why like me. yeah <laughs> i have to ask you some stuff like totally not sports related okay so what is your favorite music artist of all time i would say say bob marley you have him on your yeah i do i do I, I do have it um i had got it done in the philippines matter of fact um but the reason being um his music his music had a purpose um low vibration and his music. Um, he got his music to the people across the world dealing with, you know, violence, just having, uh, you know, the politicals and things like that just to come together for the people, just one love. And yeah, something that everyone can understand and relate to. Basically. Yeah, and recently a movie just came out, One Love. Um, Did you watch it? Of course. Uh, <laughs> and, um, just things that I know about him and read, and just the way of how he pursued his career, also for his kids, and of course being from the islands and the culture of Caribbean, of you know, uh, that that fits me. That fits my my mood. I yeah, I get that totally. Yeah. So, um, what's your favorite song of all time? Um, on time, I'll have to go with. Ooh. If you were to pick one, redemption song, redemption song, uh, of course, one love, other songs like Natural Mystic, uh, but uh, yeah, I have to go with redemption song. So uh, now we're switching to like this short questions that I ask everyone that comes to my show, mm -hmm. and the first one is, what was the last thing that pissed you off? Ooh, boy, the last thing that pissed me off, boy. Damn. 
<laughs> the last thing that pissed me off, man. Nothing. I really not recall something that pissed me off besides is. Nah, nothing. Nothing crazy. Nothing I wanna, you know, broadcast. Uh, That's <laughs> but the first nothing, one. Yeah, yeah, but nothing. But nothing serious. Nothing really like pissed me off. That's the first one. I mean, I congratulate you yeah. for giving me that answer because, you know, everyone before you, they were like answering this question. They were all like yeah. trying to complain about the traffic and about the little little things. Yeah, there's no point because it's there. It's like nothing out of your control. Right. And um, I just think like controlling your emotions and just having control of what you could control and things that you can't, you can't. It's no I point like to get mad. Like it's no point. Okay, then, then what was the last thing that made you smile? Uh, last thing I say today, uh, I say just waking up this morning and being able to just breathe and just be here, enjoy the moment, and I think that's the that's the main thing. And um, like I said, seeing my mom talking to her, telling her about this interview, and she's just telling me it's gonna be okay. You're gonna enjoy it. Don't be nervous. I know it's something different, but she gave me the confidence and all the other people that. I mentioned this too, gave me good encouragement and I'm enjoying it, I appreciate it. Thank, thank you, well, I mean, and thank you thank to your mom. Shout out to your mom because- uh, Yeah, Miss Shirley. Miss Shirley, because she was really like right when she did yeah, it, right? Yeah, 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 you're right. It's not, gonna, it's not going to be anything uh, tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you, it was a tremendous uh, conversation and mm -hmm. I really enjoyed having this conversation with you. And I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. Uh, in your career and in private life as well. All right, thank you. Thank you guys for watching and be sure to stay with us for even more interviews. Bye.